Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanim. So, Ripple put out that impactful document the other day. I hope everybody read it. It was only 44 pages. I know some dense information, but it's great to read. I want to direct your attention here to page 26, okay? So, <laughs> if you want to, you can turn to page 26 now. If not, you can read it later, or you could just listen here with me because I tell it, I tell it so good. <laughs> anyway, this chapter is called or titled Barriers to Adoption. This is key. It tells you with facts what's going to happen and what catalysts need to occur before there's mass adoption. What barriers there are there, right? So let's just read this little tidbit here, okay? It says, given the perceived size of impact and range of benefits, what is stopping financial institutions and enterprising uh, enterprises from adopting cryptocurrencies? Respondents for both Okay, here's, let's listen closely here. Respondents for both cited fraud and scams. All these scam coins, all the rug pulls have to go away. They're going to be eradicated. They have to be. When, I'm going to pause right there, okay? Bear with me. When there is proper regulation, those frauds are going to go away. All those scam coins, all those meme coins, most of them are scams. All of those rug pulls. They're going to be eradicated. Prepare for that, okay? And also, what's going to happen is once, and I've been saying this since last year, and I stand by it, once all of those frauds and scams are removed, all of that legacy system money that has been sitting on the sidelines because they didn't want to get in, it's two reasons. One, they don't have regulatory clarity. That's one. Nobody wants a subpoena from the SEC or any governmental entity. Number two, there's a prestige involved that they need to maintain. If they get involved in something, it has to be clean. It has to be good. It has to allow them to maintain their prestige, okay? And in association with, with, in association with something that is above board, not something that is seedy and looked at as shadowy and possibly being used by corrupt entities. They don't want that. So that legacy system money, once these barriers are removed, will flood blood into the bank coins specifically because i believe and i think the data backs this up this the bank coins will be the ones at the forefront because they are what they are regulatory compliant xrp regulatory compliant xlm regulatory compliant both liquidity tokens by the way algorand regulatory compliant hbar cello regulatory compliant they are bank coins for a reason they are beloved by the commercial and central banks for a reason. And they were tested by MIT for the Fed for a reason. <laughs> All right. That's facts. Let's continue on here. So respondents for both cited fraud and scams. Unclear regulation. I don't know how this is going to happen, how this is going to occur. Because you have these particular issues with the SEC, which is, in my humble opinion, needs to be investigated. There's something wrong there. And now with the uncovering that we released the other day of what was going on in those messages, when that particular head of the SEC was informed that, yes, what they were doing was illegal by a, a supervisory entity, and that individual kept doing that, that exposed that there is possible corruption within that governmental agency. And that needs to be looked into. So I, I don't know to expect any type of regulatory clarity from them um, or rather any clear regulation, any fair regulation. There are other governmental entity entities that can do that. I'm hoping that they step forward. We will see. But as of right now, the case is going great, but that and regulatory clarity are not exactly tied together, not too tightly tied together, okay? Uh, because yes, Ripple could come out on top and it would do great for, for Ripple as a company. And XRP would shoot up and it would be able to do all the things it needs to do because XRP would have clarity, right? Um, and to a lesser extent, XLM, right? XLM has certain clarity that was given to it at a particular time, but yes, it would still need that same type of clarity um, that XRP has, okay? Um, but I mean, it depends on how they go about it because like I said, there was another governmental entity that gave XLM clarity, but 
then the question is how much is that word of that agency respected? So I have to be a realist in that, but as of now, that I think that's why Exelum hasn't had the same problems that XRP has had. All right, uh, but anyway, so I wanted to just give the two sides of that. But unclear regulation is another reason why they're on the sidelines. But let's continue on here. And price volatility. Now, <laughs> Ripple likes to use certain words to convey an, a message to the individuals who this was made for. It wasn't made for us. This was made for uh, brief briefings within offices to higher up CEO, CEO, COOs of large business institutions, commercial banks, central banks and such, right? So they use certain language where if retail does read this, it doesn't give too much away. But those who are in the know and sat in meetings before, they understand what it means. You're going to, don't worry, we're going to get to this and you're going to understand what I mean when we read this. Huge. It says, and price volatility as the three biggest challenges slowing adoption. It should be noted that at least two of these three hurdles are related. Here we go. You ready? In terms of volatility, based on patterns identified with other asset types in the past, we believe that as crypto markets and usage matures, usage matures, liquidity will increase. Liquidity will increase and volatility will lessen. But that remains to be seen. Let's chop off that little piece. We don't need that, but but remains to be seen. We don't need that. Let's just look at the key piece that we that they dropped right there. Read it again. Are you catching what they just said? As usage matures, liquidity will increase and volatility will lessen. What do you do? You understand what they just confirmed? Okay, let's 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 just use a little deductive reasoning. Okay, so XRP is a liquidity token. You need a massive amount of liquidity to act as a cushion for banks so that you can solve all of their problems. Also, it lends to the efficiency of transactions as well, right? So you have these three things, which means that if more banks are using XRP as liquidity, which XRP was stated directly in Ripple documents from Ripple.com, by the way, which a lot of you downloaded, XRP is the liquidity, which means they're gonna be pooling their money into XRP to create a gigantic liquidity pool. What does that do to, to XRP's price, theoretically speaking? Raise a tail, it would raise. It would raise the top. It would raise. That price would go up exponentially. Now, so we're dealing with a price that is made to act as a liquidity pool, cushion, and bridge currency for interbank payments. Millions of dollars, trillions of dollars a day, possibly if we're talking about getting involved in replacing Swift or congealing with Swift. But we're talking about a, very, a, a higher price. <laughs> we're talking about a higher price. Then, so we're, we're, we have this higher price here. Right. You have your price in mind. Now, let's read that again. Keeping that higher price in mind. Liquidity will increase and volatility will lessen. So it's going to stabilize at that higher price. Theoretically speaking, using deductive reasoning and Occam's razor says dictates that the simplest answer is typically not always typically the correct one. You did your own research, didn't you? That means it's going to stabilize at a higher price. Thus, them being able to truthfully make the statement that volatility will lessen. Didn't we postulate that all along that you would need to stabilize, not just need, but you can stabilize that price at a higher range, which would take it out the hands of retail investors, which are a added component of the volatility. This is only logical. Not only that, I, if you look at the landscape and you see how XRP holders and XLM holders, algo holders are a little bit different. You offer them some staking. You let them know the US dollar is absolutely terrible and is going down. They probably will not be selling their XRP. They just use the XRP, which is not going to lend to much volatility when that price skyrockets. By also this, there is the, um, the necessity to have a certain amount of XRP even to have an account. So when that price goes up, there's not going to be a whole lot of retail 
being able to get into XRP, depending on where the banks and financial institutions want it to go. So they're gonna have full control. Once they're able to pull their money in, that price is gonna rise up and it's gonna price a lot of people out because you need 10 of those XRP to have an account. 10. Hey, I'm not against it at all. They should have had it, kept it, what was it, 20 before? Should have kept that at 20. Get in early, do your research. You get what I'm saying? This is the nature of business. It's cutthroat, it's vicious. And if you're not ready for a fight, don't get into this. But it says, volatility will lessen, liquidity will increase. What did we just say? So that price is going up as they pull liquidity into it. Because look, they're, they're, let's not kid, kid ourselves. This is mainly about XRP. Ripple is a for-profit company. They don't have a vested interest to promote a bunch of different coins and such like that. It doesn't work that way. I'm a for-profit company. Sure, those companies are well. I'm not here to talk about them. Let them talk about themselves. I'm here to make money and push my product. My product is built on XRP to XRPL. So that's what I'm going to talk about mainly. But I'm going to do it in a way where make you comfortable and, and, and make it seem like even though I'm pushing this product on you, that I'm not so aggressive, even though I'm a lion and I'm going to chomp your money up. This is what this is. Let's read that one more time. It's mind blowing. They just confirmed a lot of what we're saying. Now, there's no guarantees in life. That's not what we're here for. But they're showing you that the probability of what, they, what will happen and how they set everything up to happen is all going according to plan and is a part of the plan. Not only is the plan going well, but it is a part of the plan to raise that liquidity up from where it is now, which means what also? What does that indicate or what does that implicate? That implicates that the price is not going to stay where it is now. That price is not going to be where the all-time high was. No. That's, what? Absolutely not. That price is going to go somewhere beautiful. Muy linda, mi gente. That price is going to go somewhere beautiful. That's what it implicates. Are you, are you reading it? It's page 26. They dropped it on you. This is huge. I told you. This, this document here is so impactful. It makes me excited to look at what they're going to drop next time. One more time. In terms of volatility, based on patterns identified with other asset types in the past. We believe that as a crypto market markets and usage matures, liquidity will increase and volatility will lessen. Okay, so now let's look at that in another way. So they're talking about asset types in the past. So let's just let's just take something like we could take two, two different uh, instances or examples. Rather, look at what happened with the Internet boom. Is anything related to that the same price it was then as of now? So the prices are more stable now, but they're at a much higher place, correct? Okay, that's one instance. Let's look at the stock market. Some of the um, most volatile stocks are the little dollar stocks and the little cheap stuff, $5, $20 stock, $40, $50 stock, $100 stocks. Those are the most volatile because they have a lot of retail involved, right? But when you start getting to those higher prices, not so much volatility. Don't get me wrong, you get your dips and your corrections here and there, but the higher those prices go, the more stable they are. So keeping that in mind, that higher price stuff tends to be less volatile because there's less access. Keep that in mind, and then we're, let's read that again, and then we're, let's apply that to what we're looking at here. Liquidity will increase, that price will increase, Liquidity and price are directly correlated. They're like directly connected. So liquidity increases, that price increases, right? Obviously, and the volatility, volatility lessens, and they're basing this upon asset types of the past. And if we go by the stock market, that means what? XRP's price has to be exponentially higher and it will stabilize there. That is their intention. That is what they are trying to convey here. And that, my friends, is a muy linda miente. So, you know what? I had a lot more to cover, but I feel very good. I feel very excited. So, <laughs> we're going to just stop there. That Listen, page 26 uh, of this particular document, the, 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 the paragraph is titled Barriers to Adoption. You can read it for yourself. This document is explosive. If you're an XRP holder and you're holding it based on facts, factual information. And uh, I mean, there's a lot more to come and there's a lot of other great PDFs that they have put out on ripple.com that you definitely should give a read to. It's highly impactful. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? In my humble opinion, my humble opinion, what they are trying to convey here is that the price will raise up. It's, nece it's a necessity for a liquidity token and liquidity pool. It's a necessity. But as it raises up, 
It will negate volatility. This is why they're trying to tell this to the commercial banks, central banks and large businesses so that they can negate that fear of volatility. That Ripple will say, hey, listen, XRP is not going to be like that. Our price is going to raise up and stabilize because we have a liquidity pool. So when we put this in your hands and we put you give you the XRPL, pull your money in there and raise that price up as fast as you can. And you're going to stabilize that price yourself. So you have the security of knowing you can do it yourself. That's exactly what they're conveying here. And if you read up the entire document, that's what they're conveying here. And the, the document that, that precedes this one as well. You want to definitely give that one a read also. Go to Ripple.com, download these documents. In my humble opinion, I can't tell you what to do. But this is what I do. And I save them as well. Save them to your cloud drive, your, your external hard drive as well, just in case. Just in case you want that external hard drive. Keep your, keep your documents offline too, just in case. Um, so now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.